I want to thank our sponsor for this summer series, which is Smash Boom Best. That's a free podcast for kids that helps them learn how to make strong arguments. Every episode of Smash Boom Best uses fun facts and the power of persuasion to help kids decide which is better between two amazing things, like chocolate versus cheese or unicorns versus dragons. The podcast uses real facts and teaches kids debate skills, and each episode has an activity sheet at smashboom.org to help your class play along and judge the debates for themselves. Look for Smash Boom Best wherever you listen to podcasts. Welcome to our special four-part summer series of Truth For Teachers, where we are taking a break from all things work-related. Every other week in June and July, I'll bring you a quick episode to help you focus on what matters most. And I'll share some things that have been on my heart that might be otherwise off-topic for a teaching podcast. Let this be a short time for us to have together where we can reflect, think deeply, and go big picture. We'll explore a different word each time to help you find the extraordinary within the ordinary. Our word here in this final week of the summer series is purpose. I came across an obscure quote from the late musical artist Prince, and I became obsessed with it the moment that I read it. Apparently, a friend had said one time to Prince, Come on, man, don't you want to make another Purple Rain album? Meaning, you had this incredible level of success. Don't you want to replicate that again? Don't you want to do another album just like that? And Prince replied to his friend, No. No, Jim. I've been to the mountaintop. There's nothing there. His friend reflected after Prince's death. If he'd gone off and he'd made Purple Rain too then you're just starting a long descent that's hard to get out of. But once you've shown I can go and do other things, then you leave all the doors and possibilities open. I think that quote and that exchange between him and his friend really struck me because I'm such a goal-oriented person. It's easy for me to be perpetually climbing the mountain. But once I get there... I only see the next mountain to climb. When you reach the mountaintop, there's nowhere to go but down. That's it. And it's a really depressing idea to be at the top of a mountain and only see more mountains that you have to climb. And you've got to start the long descent, which is far less exciting than going up. And you have to find another mountain and hope that you can get as high as you did the last time. There's something very profound in getting to the mountaintop and realizing that actually, there's nothing there. It's just you, in the stillness, with nothing around. The only thing to do is begin the downward journey and find another mountain to climb. There's something beautiful in not climbing mountains, isn't there? To just see the beauty in wherever you're at, rather than looking ahead. I love this idea of abandoning the perpetual mountain climb and just leaving all the doors and possibilities open. Just because you've received accolades or appreciation for doing something in the past, that doesn't mean you have to keep doing that same thing for the rest of your life. You might want to try something new might be something you're not particularly good at yet. And comparing your past success to new accomplishments can make you fearful about stepping out of your comfort zone. I read an article recently that talked about the decline of personal hobbies. We've become so goal-oriented in our culture that we no longer feel we can just do things for pleasure. There's no sense in painting if you're not going to become good enough to sell your art. Why take great photos if you're not going to post them on social media and grow a following as an influencer? Why perfect a cake recipe if you're not going to start a cooking blog or buy a booth at a craft fair and sell your baked goods? There's this pressure to be the best at everything and to turn talents and interests into something more than just something we do for our own personal enjoyment. 
And yet, not everything needs to have a big end goal. Not everything we do with our time needs to produce something. Not every activity needs an end product. Sometimes our purpose should be to have no purpose at all. To simply enjoy the sensation of doing something and not expect anything beyond it. As the summer begins to draw to a close, I encourage you to use these final weeks or days to think about your purpose. Not just your life's purpose and your legacy, the things that you feel like you're here on this planet to accomplish. These are things that you're striving toward. But also think about the time you spend not striving toward anything at all. Think about the time you spend just existing and the value of that. Notice the reciprocal relationship between accomplishment and simple enjoyment. Notice how your most productive times tend to follow times of rest. Notice how alternating moments of action with moments of stillness can enable you to really make the most of your life. Sometimes being purposeful means working toward a goal, but sometimes it simply means being present in the moment. It can mean realizing that there's nothing at the mountaintop but more mountains in the distance to climb. And that being on the mountaintop means more hard work is ahead. Coming down can be the hardest part. So don't rush ahead to the next big project. Don't fill your whole summer with worrying about the new school year and trying to prepare or trying to get ahead. Take a moment to really see the view from where you're at. Look out over all that you have accomplished all the low valleys you've already crossed, all the hard work you already put in to get to where you're at. Your purpose is not just about doing more. It's about fully inhabiting who you have become so far based on what you've already done. Think about our themes this summer during this podcast series. We talked about presence. We talked about alignment. We talked about authenticity. And now, purpose. When you are living authentically and are in alignment with your true self, a purposeful life doesn't have to revolve around more accomplishments. It will revolve around presence. It will mean being in this exact space that you're in and embracing it fully. So ask yourself, am I doing the things that matter most in life? Am I living out my purpose and taking joy in that? Am I present in the small moments that add up to a fulfilling life? Am I enjoying and making the most of my experience on this planet? These kinds of questions will shift your focus away from doing and into just being. When you start to feel stressed out by all the things that need to be done in the weeks ahead, bring your attention back to the present moment. Be still here, right now. Take in the view from this mountaintop instead of thinking about how you're going to climb down and what mountain you're going to climb next. The more you're present, the more you'll understand your true essential self and the more you'll live in alignment with your authentic self. This is the end of our summer podcast series, but let's continue the conversation. I'm going to let you in on a little secret early. There's now a Truth For Teachers podcast community on Facebook where you can collaborate with other listeners and discuss the podcast. This is going to be a brand new thing that I'm starting for the new season starting August 4th. But because you've been listening to the summer series, I'll tell you about it now. It's going to work differently than most Facebook groups do. 
This is not going to be a free for all where anybody can post about anything. I'll be the only one starting new posts and there will be just one post for every episode. And in the post for each episode, I'll have a discussion question. So you can collaborate around the topic with other educators and talk about how to apply the ideas that I've shared to your life and work. Anything related to that episode, you can share in the comments of that episode's post. Questions, resources, reflections, and so on. We have one post set up now for every single episode, going all the way back to episode one. So if you're binge listening and you want to talk about an old topic, there is a space for that. And you can find everything easily using the search function in the group. Search for the title of the episode or the hashtag for the episode, like hashtag EP124. I have some cool surprises planned for the Truth For Teachers podcast community too. You're going to get an inside look behind the scenes of the podcast. You'll be able to vote on future topics and guests, and you'll have special access to extended versions of certain interviews and lots more. So if you want to join, click the link in the show notes or go to Facebook and type in Truth For Teachers podcast community. I know that some of you don't use Facebook and don't like Facebook. I understand that totally. It's just the easiest place for most folks to engage in conversation. So that's why I set up the group there. However, you are still welcome to dialogue in the comments on my blog. Each podcast episode has a blog post and you can find them all at truthforteachers.com. I do read all the blog post comments and I'm happy to respond to you there if you prefer to have a discussion on the blog instead. You can also find me on Twitter or Instagram or wherever you like to hang out and tell me about the aha moments that you've had this summer as you've reflected on what I've shared here. I'll be watching for your posts. Thank you for listening to the summer series and for allowing me to experiment a little bit with format and topics. It's felt really good to talk about things other than just teaching. I know teaching is a big part of who you are and what you do, but there's more to you and more to your life than just that. And it's been fun to explore that together this summer. So enjoy the rest of your time off. And I'll be back again on August 4th with our regularly scheduled Truth for Teachers programming. I'll see you in the Facebook community until then. Bye for now.